Welcome to the Women in Business radio show with Sean Murphy, connecting women in business around the globe. Hello and welcome into the Women in Business Radio Show Studio. <laughs> Why is it always like this? It's always like this. Come on here. Honestly, my glasses have fallen off my head. My headphones are wonky. We've only just about managed it into the studio and safely on air. So, hang on a minute. And, <laughs> and breathe. <laughs> Let me just go into my place of zen here. Okay, so we are back in the studio and my co-host today is the lovely, say hello, Laura. Laura Lawrence, it's great to be here, Sean. You know how much I enjoy it when I come into the studio. It brings back so many happy, happy memories and of all those years of, of uh, co-hosting the show with you regularly. And it's lovely to have you back. And of course, you are going to be a visiting co-host because we, we've got a little bit of a, a slightly different structure. We're going to be having visiting co-hosts. It makes it a little bit easier for everybody to sort of be able able to be here it just makes it a little bit more flexible exactly now i think it's a brilliant idea and then i get my my radio fix which is uh, studio fix you know I listen to the radio all the time but not in the studio so uh, one of my best places unfortunately everybody's still stuck with me <laughs> so <laughs> there you go. but they've been listening for years there, they, cho- they choose to be stuck with you sean you know well yeah oh, that's nice isn't it yes okay right we'll go with that then um <laughs> <laughs> Who have we got in the studio with us today? We have got Lisa Perry. We have got Anne Collins. Now, Lisa is a daughter and Anne is a mum and together they are AC Bookkeeping Limited. So welcome into the studio. Hi, Sean. Nice to see you. Hi. And we're going to be having a discussion with Lisa and Anne really around setting up a family business, how that works, the dynamics of that, but also um, touching on what it's like, the difference between being a bookkeeper and an accountant and the role that they play in helping your business. Also in the studio with us and taking part in the discussion, we have Annette Rose, who is an author and spiritual anthropologist. So welcome into the studio. Thank you Annette. so much, Sean. It's great to be here. I can, and, and I'm just I'm just going to explain. I could just about see Annette because uh, we're, we're going to be swapping everybody over. At the moment, Annette is peering at me from behind one of the monitors. Yep, that's so. the <laughs> it's all right, Sean. I'll, I'll keep an eye on Annette, you know, yeah. and make sure she's OK. <laughs> So, have we got any announcements? Did you want to do it? Do you want well, to do it or shall got, I do it? <laughs> we can both do it, but of course we've got the, the very big show coming up on the 10th of August. I think that's the biggest announcement we have. and I can't wait. I went to one, uh, well, I, was, I did a presentation or a talk at one uh, um, a while ago, but um, so it's going to be good to be back. Yes, yeah, so that's the Women in Business Big Show. And everybody that we have in the studio today is, in fact, an exhibitor. Yes. So if you yeah. come along to the show, you are going to be able to see them as well. And it is really good fun. Actually, it's, it's really relaxed and it's good fun. We've got some f- fantastic networking going on. We've got some brilliant talks and we've got some amazing exhibitors, amazing stands. So come along and chat to them as well. Everybody's really, really friendly. And I always encourage people, this is one thing I encourage people to do, is instead of going out and getting branded gonks and whimsies and banners and all that sort of thing yes do that if you've got that bring it along but if you haven't actually and even if you have get your crayons out create something a little bit different tell your story use photos use drawings use all sorts of things to actually tell your story behind business because really that's what people want to hear they want to see and hear your story and it creates a point um, it creates a talking point doesn't it It gives you something a little bit different to have a discussion about and i think really sort of shows what it is that you do for your business i think that's that's really important i mean one of the things because i i run um local publications and and one thing if i'm writing about a business i always insist that i get a picture of the person behind the business to introduce them to that community because people buy from people so the more people um who are visiting who can actually sort of relate to you as a person when they go by your stand you know then they're more likely to talk to you or it will help them engage um quicker with you and everything so i think it's a brilliant idea but it's i think it's also a matter of finance especially if you're starting out in your business because when you're starting starting out you may not your telephone number may not be sorted out your email may not be sorted out your name may not be sorted out or it could all change in the next few weeks you know that's just the way it goes everything evolves as we're going through and and building our businesses what we're doing changes and if you go and spend a fortune on pens and and I don't know, things and pull up banners and thousands of leaflets. And then, you know, the next year, 
that is of no use because you've actually switched and changed. In fact, it can be a little bit of an anchor because you can be so. I, I spent so much money on this. I've got a shell system. I've got this, that, and the other. I spent so much money on my exhibition material that you, you know I can't change. But businesses evolve; they just do. And so you can sort of cut out all of that expense, all of that design stuff, all of that, and all of the stress of getting it delivered and it arriving on time and the box going to the wrong place and all of that sort of well, thing. You see a type. But, at the last yeah. minute. Oh, yes. That's, that's, uh... <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, by, by, by actually going down to somewhere like the range, go to Hobbycraft, get some picture frames, put something different in it, put something that's actually really unique for, for you and your business and creates a talking point. Brilliant. That's well, actually an amazing idea, John. I never thought about it like that. I, really I, have this convers- I have this conversation with a lot of people about exhibiting and it's one of the things that I really wanted to achieve at, at the Women in Business Big Show. It's one of the reasons that I started doing it was when I exhibited myself at some very big events where I'd spent, you know, over a £1,000 on a stand and but the stand wasn't enough. You had to have everything else that went with it as well, otherwise you looked out of place. And I thought, that, that is not the sort of event I want to run. I want, a, I want to run an event where somebody who's just started out and, you know, has got 30 quid you know that's enough and they can spend their time and get their crayons out and get creative rather than having to spend a lot of money on a lot of money on on marketing material so that they look like they fit in who wants to fit in Exactly. Really? You've got to stand <laughs> out. It's not a bit different. Who, who, wants, who wants to fit in? So it's a sort of, it's a case within reason of anything goes. You know, one of the best marketing things I've ever seen that created a little bit of a stir and got people to talk was a lady who's a hyp- hypnotherapist and she didn't have anything at all to put up on her stand. And I happened to have some big bits of paper, you know, like you put on a flip chart. And I gave her a couple of those and a black pen. And she did two great big swirly eyes on it like sheer Khan. The, the tiger <laughs> and stuck those up with some blue tack on the pillar and um, it just people laughed they laughed and they stopped and they spoke to her and she got clients brilliant yeah, because she because they spoke to yeah. her you know anyway that's enough of that Waff, waffling on and where is it? Where can it's, people go to it? And at what time? It, Let's let everyone really know the think details. So? I think so. See, this is they why, know it's on the 10th of this August. This is why I have to have her in the they studio. They know it's a great show. But it's, how? It's how are they going to get there? It's the 10th of August. Just get there. <laughs> um, it is at, it's at Longfield Academy. The doors open to visitors at 9 o'clock. It is free for visitors to come in. We do have VIP tickets, but it's free for you to come in. And that gets you access to absolutely everything um, apart from the VIP welcome in the morning and the VIP thank you very much in the evening and some sort of bits and pieces that are behind the scenes for VIPs so if somebody wants to be a VIP or if they want to do they have to register for the event they have, they, yes so they do you can you can just turn up you're much better off registering um, if you if you register you can have a badge and all sorts of bits and pieces and we'll keep you up to date if you want to be a VIP you have to pay it's £49 and you pay to be a VIP and you're going to get some extra things from some of our sponsors and our um, other exhibitors Um, we have two key exhibitors who are putting into the mix and personal training and support for our VIP visitors. You also get to do a little bit of hobnobbing with... You can't <laughs> with, beat hobnobbing. <laughs> you, can't be, you can't beat hobnobbing, can you? No. But uh, it's large. It is free for everybody to come in and that gets you access to all of the talks. Uh, and they register where? Well, if they go to the Women in Business Big Show, you are relentless, aren't you? I just want to make sure that everybody has this if, opportunity. If, if you go to the Women in Business bigshow.com um, you can find it there on there there is a form you can register as a visitor so you just fill that in and you register as a visitor but we won't turn you away on the day no that's good well, I just no, want to I make sure everyone, everyone's you know because we've got always picking up new listeners we, all the time we do we have free parking that's magic we have, we have free parking driving. it is flat access as well so just come along and it is really really good fun there's also going to be lots of networking going on there we have women in business mid Kent we have 1230 the women's company we have two ladies who latte um, networking there so there's a lot of that going on as well so it's a really good place to meet people get ideas listen to the talks and generally have a really good fun day out relaxed as well and come along and meet our fabulous exhibitors. Excellent. 
Right, OK, let's get on with the main order of the day. So we are welcoming properly into the studio Elisa and Anne, who are collectively AC Bookkeeping Limited. So yes, welcome hi. welcome into the studio. And you are a family business. We are. And you work you work together, yes. actually together, together. Actually together, together. yeah. <laughs> OK, I'm just going to sit here for a little while and just <laughs> absorb that. <laughs> Yes, we we yes. know. We've had a few comments about that. Yes. Do you actually work in the same room then? Do you have like an office that you share together? Yes. Oh, okay. do. And yeah, do, yeah. on top of that, we actually live at a farm and we live next door to each other. Okay. I'm starting to feel unwell. <laughs> 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 I, might, I, might I ha- think that's lovely. I might do you now. I do. I, I might have to just lovely. spend a few minutes under the desk <laughs> in, 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 in my cave, just <laughs> thinking through how this would work for me, and I can't imagine it working, actually. Well, that's it. It is not for everyone, but it for those no. who, who, you know, think there might be a chance that they have something that they could do with a family member, mm-hmm. then I think listening to this story is going to be a very inspirational journey. And also, the other thing is, is that sometimes the best people to work with are the people in your family because they are the most appropriate people to work with. They just happen to be a member of your family. And so you need to... It's a very peculiar relationship, isn't it? um, My husband is also my business partner. And so we have to negotiate, navigate a very a, a similar arrangement of this isn't personal, one person is the boss... Do you want to guess who? Yeah. <laughs> mm. That's a tricky one, isn't it, Mark? I feel yeah. your pain. <laughs> you're listening. But, but there are, but there, there are, th- there are things, there are aspects of your relationship that you need to be able to turn off and on if it's going to survive as a business relationship. So yeah. does that sound about right? Definitely. It does, doesn't it? Yeah. So I'll tell you what, let's hear, we're going to start off with hearing um, a little bit your story. So how you started off being a family business. So do I just, do you, would you like me to pick one of you or would you like to have a little argument first? <laughs> no, we, we try not to argue. We, <laughs> we compliment each other. Yeah. <laughs> off you go. So yeah, it, um, well, it began... The office, uh, the business is, uh, it was incorporated in January 22. Um, we've actually worked together for many years before that, for about eight years. Yeah, our background is in hospitality. Um, many, many years um, enjoying various days that turn out not as you think they would be. <laughs> Working in finance, in hospitality, anything mm. can happen at any time during the day and you... You just muck in, so yeah. So we were, yeah, we used to work at various hotels um, in Kent together, and we were the main finance function. So um, before that, actually, I worked in uh, hosp- in the sort of doing the weddings and planning the events, um, and then I had my kids, and there wasn't really much of a call for a part time wedding coordinator or events coordinator. Yeah, no, I could see how that, that could be tricky. And so when, when you started off, let me just clarify this, you were working for an organisation and both of you had a separate boss. Yes. 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 So, yeah. so there was a boss who who was sort of in charge, if you like, of both of you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I had my children and, yeah, I wanted to stay within the hospitality industry because I loved it. Um, and I sort of, obviously, mum was doing the finance function of the hotel and I said, oh, is there any part-time options there? And she was like, yeah, we can definitely facilitate that. So I went in and did some um, just sort of standard bookkeeping things there. Um, and over time, we, it grew into, I was qualified and, you know, took all of the exams whilst having very young children, which was very hard. Yeah. <laughs> um, but then, you know things develop and I I think the reason that the business started when we started AC Bookkeeping the idea came to us in lockdown when lockdown happened um, we worked in a hotel in Bromley and we had to take the whole finance function home we bubbled yeah it was physically physically took the office physically moved everything yeah because back then everybody was still using lots of paper uh, lots of files lots of really bulky things that we all had to move wasn't it we yeah. set up an office at home in one of the farm out buildings it sounds very strange to me it was very very nice yeah and um, we, we bubbled didn't we and we we managed to keep the whole thing going from from our home um which worked really well for the hotel um and you know it, it, we ca- we helped carry it through and 
we did a lot of we had to learn all about furlough no one had heard about that (laughs) Uh, we had to navigate everything remotely Uh, so we made the whole thing sort of go paperless um, and we carried on doing that for I don't know how many months it was well I don't think we were allowed even back to the hotel until about the August or September, were we? So at this point, you were acting as bookkeepers, finance, and also if you're dealing with furlough, general sort of office support management and and keeping all of that sort of thing going just remotely. Yes. Yes. Okay. financial controller with um, Lisa being my assistant, so furlough was definitely a challenge. Mm. Um, But we found it really worked. We loved working together a short commute to the kettle and back again um we came out of lockdown and a lot of companies were offering as it's now called hybrid so we were thinking oh well we've we've proved we can do it let's let's see if we can carry on it wasn't a requirement at the time so um lisa changed jobs I think I can't remember the date you changed jobs uh, it was around the July and 21 actually yeah because of the commuting really yeah um and I found coming out of lockdown I don't know if anybody else found this but commuting driving again on the roads it was so different it was there were so many more lorries and it was just such a different experience I didn't remember from before having been at home for ages so I I didn't like that part of it and then the idea of of forming AC started to evolve in about November 21. Um, And a funny thing, I'll pick on what you said there, Sean, about getting all your bits and pieces ready for your stand at a show and you you might notice a typo at the last minute. Well, when we first set up AC Bookkeeping, I was on company's house to register the company. (laughs) And our strength is in numbers, not spelling. And I registered AC bookkeeping. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we... Oh dear. So bookkeeping is the only word in the English language with two. No, uh, three. T- three, sorry. Three doubles. Double O, double K, and double E. Yeah, so I we didn't out, have that at that point. I missed a K. <laughs> <laughs> and it was Lisa who noticed, thank heavens, before we got any far further down along. the line. <laughs> it would have been awful if we'd started printing things. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, um, so that's that's how AC was formed, really. It was the idea in lockdown that actually we can do everything remotely that we can do in an office and we can support businesses in and around Kent and Medway with our skills. Um, I guess the difference being that we become where we come from a quite a long line of and history of hospitality. We had a different work, ec- work ethic. So we, um, you know, in hospitality, it doesn't shut. It's always on the go, and we were always getting emails and um, at all sorts of times of the day and everything. So it was, we've we've got a basis here to be able to provide a service maybe like no other. So it's constantly on the go and constantly customer service based. So I, I just want to ask, so, so from the time you registered your business and you were still working then anyway, so that point because I know a lot of people um, who are listening you know that they either they need to go through it or mm. you know have done but you know when you give up one thing to start your own thing how, how was that how was that transition how did you feel when you had to go and sort of um, speak to the you know because the, the company was effectively losing both of you or did you stagger Lisa that had, um, moved on before right um, but it, it's, it's a, it was a challenge I won't I, it, it was tough because you're in my case, I wanted to do entrance exams to be affiliated to the Institute of Certified Bookkeepers to get the practice licence, which we hold. Um, and I was doing another job. So it was six months of double doing, if you like. Then um, we went to um, an Institute of Certified Bookkeepers Summit in London in November. Yeah, it was November, November 22. 22. And there was a very inspirational speaker there and she was talking about starting her own business and she had a picture on the screen of a diving board with two feet at the end of it. And she said, if you're never sure what to do, just jump, go for it. And we both looked at each other (laughs) with wide eyes, (laughs) thinking, shall we? Shall we? Yeah, no. Yeah, we both worked part-time jobs or other jobs uh, to help support the initial start-up. 
um, long hours. It's not easy. Anyone knows mm. that that started a business. Uh, but the November was the turning point for us. We went to the institute. We were really inspired by the people that were there that were doing it on their own. And we thought, you know what? We saw that diving board. We thought, let's just go for it. Let's just do it. Do you think that you were looking back now in hindsight? That do you think that you were ready to jump, and that just sort of gave you the little bit of impetus? And that if you'd have gone to that summit, say six or eight months or a year earlier, you wouldn't have gone. You wouldn't have leapt. Absolutely. Yeah, we were. It was probably primed. Yeah. So and it, ready. It, it, yeah. So so that message yeah, tapped in, totally tapped agree. into your tapped into your gut instinct of where you were mm. um, and so you got it at the right time yeah. totally agree yeah, it, was, okay. it was just an amazing feeling it was like we drew it into our lives wasn't it that image it can, was... can I there's just an observation I want to make and it's just occurred to me and I'm just, so I'm just going to make it <laughs> it's that as we're having this conversation you're going we went to this thing in November 22 or it was in like July 21 when you were doing this and how sort of precise you are about that <laughs> stuff because I go Oh, I, I don't know. It was like a, a year or so ago. <laughs> I, I actually wouldn't be able to come up with any idea of date, and neither would I try, actually. And I just, it just struck me that um, you're probably doing the right thing. <laughs> I was going, well, Anne did with say the they do numbers, not words. Yeah, Whereas I always say I, I do words, not I numbers. I have no idea when, when stuff has happened. I wouldn't be able to come up with a month, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't try. It just, it happened at some point. Who knows? Does it matter when? No. But you, you, you're actually sort of really quite precise. And I thought, that's, I, I just found that interesting. I thought, I could not imagine be, doing bookkeeping. Um, and that's why, is because th- that sort of level of preciseness with numbers and, and dates is, I, I just couldn't do it. Yeah. yeah couldn't do it. Definitely all about the numbers <laughs> for us. <laughs> they're, they're markers in sand as well, I think. Markers in time of when things happen to you. Uh, one of the other things that we uh, happened to us along the journey was our logo. We created our own logo. We thought it was brilliant, great. Definitely we didn't, it, shouldn't it have got to... it printed. <laughs> <laughs> I think we've had five business cards anyway. We took it to... Only five? Uh, <laughs> five versions. And we took it to a web designer and she looked at it and she went, oh, yeah, no. No, that's not happening. <laughs> she redesigned it for us. So you use the professionals mm. to help you build your business. I'm not good at design, and I, I couldn't proofread anything. Logos are really funny things, actually. It's the sort of thing that people always assume that they can do themselves. Mm. But just because it looks good on a piece of paper or a business <laughs> card doesn't mean it'll work on a website. And if ever you needed to blow it up and put it on a billboard... It wouldn't work then either, and a square one won't work somewhere else. And you have to, and you actually need to have a suite of logos, of different shapes and sizes yeah. to send off. They're not that easy. Yeah, well, I didn't know so much went into a yeah, logo. Well, no, you don't. It's not, it's not until you actually start sort of looking into it that you realise actually this is a lot more complicated than it yeah. looks like it, it's going to be. Yeah, that's that's um, the whole part of um, building a business is. We need experts to help Mm. us build our business because they're good at what they do. And then in turn, we are good at the bookkeeping to leave the experts to do the creative Mm. stuff within their business, free up their more time. But it was quite quite funny with the business cards. We could probably line them all up and say, spot the difference. (laughs) On on the other hand, I think if somebody's listening in and they're considering what steps they need to take, they're starting a business, I think your logo is, is... it's right at the bottom of the pack it really it, it's something you get done when everything else is done mm. you, uh, whereas I think so many people start with a logo and then work from there mm. and it, it's it, it, it can be quite a lot of money if you're going to do it properly up front and people recognise font and colour if you stick with font and colour you're probably going to be okay you can yeah. carry that forward but anyway so don't go spending fortunes check how you've spelt your name, name. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's start. Tell us a little bit about what bookkeepers do. And where I think people get confused is the difference between a bookkeeper and accountant. I'll tell you something else that I think people get confused is that an accountant is better than a bookkeeper. Um, now, I know that that's not the case because 
I sort of understand and have worked with both. But I think it's some t- sometimes that is the impression that people get that, or you, do, that, you know, the bookkeeper does that bit, but go and get an accountant because they do everything, and it isn't necessarily the case. I think that's a, a yeah. big misunderstanding. And the sorts of people that you work with. So, t- so, so. Have, have you, uh, do you need to write that down? No, no, go I've got it, it, in got it up here. <laughs> Sorry, I've asked it all, all at the same time. <laughs> so I've um, been asked this question many times before. Oh, and Really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I like to give an example. Um, I think I may have done it in a, a presentation at the Women in Business uh, networking group, actually. So I like to think as, of bookkeepers and accountants like a nurse and a doctor. So think of their roles. So the doctor is a highly skilled professional. They usually have to maybe go to university or study for many years to get very high qualifications. You know, as an accountant, you know, they would need all the tax. um, They'd need to know about the tax, um, which is a minefield. And I absolutely salute any (laughs) accountant that knows all the ins and outs and tax. Um, they're, They're just that sort of, the person that oversees everything and does the sort of top part, the operation. So in accounts world, the year end, they're looking at how to get the client in the best tax position, uh, how to save them the most money, making sure everything's filed correctly, giving them advice, projections, uh, looking forward five years, business plans, those sorts of things, the real intricate things. The bookkeeper, I like to think, is more like the day-to-day nurse that comes in to nurture the patient. So they keep them on track, they keep their, you know, make sure their medicines are administered on time, that sort of thing. So a bookkeeper will come in and check on the company day to day, week to week, whatever they require, uh, bring everything up to up to speed, reconcile the bank accounts, all of the purchases, invoicing, make sure everything's organised so that it's it, sh- it can be at the end of the month, here's, here's the results, this is what we've got, this is your progress... This is what we might need to look at. Um, and they sort of do those day-to-day incremental bits. Uh, that's really the main difference of a bookkeeper so, and accountant. So what I'm getting from that, and and this is a bit creepy because I sort of already know the answer, is that in actual fact, the bookkeeper and the relationship that the bookkeeper has with their client is actually more important because it's a much closer relationship and it's more involved and it's more hands-on than... The accountant, in actual fact, because you can, if, if the accountant is looking at the the highly qualified stuff at the end of the year, that sort of thing, they're taking that big overview. You could actually bring another one in. I'm sure any accountants that are out there listening would just be horrified. But that you you have your day to day handholding that keeps you on track. And in actual fact, as long as there's somebody to oversee it at the end, then that could be sort of anybody. Well, people have obviously built very good relationships with their accountants and they trust mm. them um and some accountants do yeah, offer but, but, bookkeeping but that's the thing, yeah is that some accountants do have that sort of yeah, one-to-one relationship with their clients where, where it is very it is very hands-on and it's a very connected relationship but not all of them and i think it's important to understand the difference between the two yeah but it's no good getting an accountant in the ho- and with the expectation that that's absolutely what's going to happen, that you're going to be ringing them up every day or they're going to be contacting you every day and going, have you seen this or we need to sort that out or this is happening, when actually that's not generally what their training is about. That's not really what they're there to do. They may take on that role, but that's not their role. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Mm. They, often we look upon it that we are sort of keeping the pulse of the business. We're in touch with the business day to day, week to week, month to month. Um And the books, when prepared by a bookkeeper, then presented to an accountant, are so much more easy to analyse, to understand, to sort out the best tax position, as Lisa said, and do the best for that client and the journey that client wants to be on, because they might have an idea where they want to be in five years' time. Now, the alternative is if you took a box of paper at the end of the year to an accountant They'd be horrified, probably. And with some accountants within their businesses have bookkeepers, which is great, but some don't. So it's really getting your house in order, your books in order, where the mm. accountant can get hold of them and do the stuff they do best. So 
putting all of that t- together and also, you know, perhaps looking at the type of clients that you have, what's, what do you say is the biggest problem that you solve for your clients? Bank Ooh. reconciliation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's, it, it's hard as a business owner. I mean, we obviously have to do our own bookkeeping as well, so we know. And it's, you know, it's that job that you just put off to the end of the day or you just think, oh, there's something much more important. That's happened. I need to concentrate what's mm. happening or what's going to happen. Um, and it's it's those things that fall behind and you think, oh, it's only a week, I'll catch it up. And then, oh, it's only a month, I'll catch it up. And it just r- snowballs into such mm. a big thing in your mind that you just think oh my god I don't know where to start and it's you know if it's looked at weekly or something by someone that isn't in the business but wants to be part of the team that's how we look at ourselves we want to be part of the team we want to help free up the time so how do you work with clients how do people send things to you so you know do, do you look in their bank accounts do, do they drop off do they drive by once a week and <laughs> no, throw no. with a box <laughs> <laughs> yeah. with a box, a box how, how, how does the relationship work between that you know you and your client and 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 reconciling this and yeah. sort of working it out what do you what do you prepare and what do you show them well we've been um recently to uh, Countex, which yeah. was in London at the Excel, which was a, an exhibition for bookkeepers and accountants. There was so much stuff there that we took on, away from it. Um, one being a system called Dext Prepare, um, which has been, even just for our clients so far, has been invaluable. It's a really great way of getting the information from them to us and us into their system in a nice, smooth, organised manner. Um, we we took on a subscription and we charge a minimal amount out to our clients if they want to use it. They don't have to. But it's just a really good way if they can literally take a snapshot on their phone of a receipt when they're out and about mm. and we, we'll get it mm. and it's instant and we can deal with it later that day or later that week whenever, you know, they just can snap it and they don't have to remember about it anymore. And, That's how, done. and, and what about the other expenses So, or, or things coming in and out? Do you, do you have access to the bank accounts? Some, um, we have dual authorisation mm. to set up payments for them. Um, not all banks allow that. So some, we just sort of send them an email reminding them that these payments are due and they go into their own banks and set them up. Um, but it's it's whatever each client's so it's really individual. Quite, it's really at, at, at the level that you're, de- you're dealing at. The important thing here is that it, it is rele- it, it's relevant for the particular client and how they want to work. Yes, yeah, yeah that's yeah. right. I mean, the software, many accounting softwares are the same. Bookkeeping software, they have bank feeds, so the bank transactions automatically come in. So we don't have to go and get them. They automatically come into the software, and they'll sit there saying I need to be reconciled so then that's what we do is to make everything balance it's all electronically done it's all secure um, and it's a really efficient way of getting the accounts pack ready for the end of the month and that, that's what they want they want a, a management account pack that shows them what happened last month to detail so they can make their decisions going forward for the next month or the mm. following month and that's really valuable to clients um, and they've said the management of account pack, it just, it shows them where they want. So t- tell me, what, what's in a management account pack? What sort of information would I see if I had one? Yeah, so it would be, so we'd do a profit and loss analysis for the month and we sometimes compare it if they've got enough records to the year before. So we might look at that accounting month, the year prior, see how much better they're doing. We might compare it just a quarter. So it mm. gives them a, a bit more of an overview um, and we've well, obviously, balance sheet and things would go in there as well to show about all. So of it's the... quite a sort of fine level of detail and comparison, and you would set that up with your client depending on what it was that they perhaps needed to yeah. monitor and, and know. I mean, some clients like to see what outstanding invoices haven't paid, so they can go on to chase them, or they ask us to chase them. Um, what invoices are due to be paid next month, so they can work towards a sales target. Um, just hmm. all sorts of different information we can pull out mileage expenses if they want you know whatever they look for we can tailor it to their their needs how much some people say how much did i pay on advertising last month yeah <laughs> so we tell <laughs> them that like, oh, okay we'll cut that back this month <laughs> yeah i mean we we produce a lot of um what are called in the industry kpis key performance indicators 
So we'll tell them how much they spent on payroll, how much their goods cost to, to supply the service, maybe, yeah, how much they spent on advertising. And then we'll look further into where the differences are. So if payroll was 30% one month and then it was 40%, there's got to be a reason why. Mm. And they won't know that by just sitting looking at their accounting software. So it's the analytics that were produced at the end of the month which give them an idea of how the spending is going. Right. Laura. That, that makes me sort of think, because I, I sort of try and do a lot of stuff myself with zero. I got Dext and then it all goes to my accountant. And I go through sort of phases where, you know, I'm really good at staying on top of stuff, but um, more often I'm not. And as that sort of really highlights one of the things um, that you're sort of saying is that, you know, if, if, if your books are up to date, you can actually just take a look and, and know how you're doing yes. rather than, um, you know, I, I do have a little bit of a fly by the seat of my pants sort yep. of um, way of how I run my business. And, you know, sort of 17 years of that, I've got very sturdy pants, but um, it's, <laughs> it just, <laughs> it, you know, very and big, I'm always... Big waterproof pants. <laughs> <laughs> everything, everything. Um, but it, it, you know, it, and it's and I, I've sort of got into this habit where my partner has a bookkeeper coming in once a month for his business. So when he has her in, I then think, right, that's when I'm going to dedicate and sit down and and sort of get on top of it. But it's that's only been a recent thing, mm. you know. So it, it's hard, of, and you've got to be disciplined to do your own bookkeeping. It's just it's yeah. boring, isn't it? Sorry, yeah. I, it, it uh, is, to it, many people, it is. Yeah, it, but it's a boring part of the business, isn't it? Is, it? Yeah. It's it's a detail of the business that for, for a lot of us and, and for, for people especially who are entrepreneurial who've set up a business because they're doing something that they love mm. you want to do the stuff you love mm. and the, the sitting down with your spreadsheets that is, so is not that is so key is that we do we do do the boring bits but I'm not a creative person I couldn't sell anything probably um, so we of could Oh, I can sell bookkeeping. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> a bookkeeping even. <laughs> but, yes, it's brand new, sir. <laughs> yeah, it's a bookkeeping. But I, we take that hassle away from the people who mm. then carry on and do the, what they're experts at. Mm. And we've found when people start a business, they will go for the best salesperson, the best HR person, the best this. But they forget about the bookkeeping. Mm. And then six yeah. months down the line, they go, ah, I need a bookkeeper. Where's my money? Yeah, what, what's happening? Yeah. Well, yeah, where's the money? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So yeah. We, tr we try to um, explain the numbers as well. We don't just give them the spreadsheets and hope that and they, they get it away. and go, no. you know. So, to a lot of people in that with that creative mind, uh, numbers on a spreadsheet scare them. Absolutely. You know, and they think, oh, my gosh, I don't know what that means or, you yeah. know. There's one example for instance, we went to visit some clients and he he was hiring some a piece of equipment. And I said, do you know how much you paid to hire that same piece of equipment week in, week out? And it was probably double the cost of the piece of equipment. So he bought it himself, owned it, no more hire charges going through the mm. accounts. And that's the sort of thing that people don't realise or don't understand unless they see or they're it all too Or they're too busy to look at there it. Was yeah. just not, it's look just at not it, the yeah. way their brain is wired. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, he's digging the hole. Yeah. Mm. He's digging the hole and as long as the spade works, we're OK. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so, and, and I, that isn't a criticism. That's, I, I no, get it. Yeah. And, and it's that's how we can help business. and advise. So we're not mm. just... Producing a management pack with a load of numbers. So you're not just advice. you're not just a separate set you're not just a separate set of eyes. You're a different viewpoint as well, exactly. aren't you? Yeah. Okay. I think we need to go into the horrible part of the show. <laughs> Where I told we... them there'll be nothing horrible. It's just like a really it's good fun show. It's not horrible. It's it's just it's a little bit more fun. It's a little bit yeah. more sort of uh, free and easy. But there are some things in there that we look at, like. Um, I'll tell you what, we'll start off with something nice. We'll start off with, what have you two learned this week? Oh, <laughs> this just week. Just really well, this quick, week's... off the top, just, just <laughs> out it comes. Don't think about <laughs> this it. This week's been half term. So, yeah, so what have you learned? <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, not everything can be done straight away in half term. That's what I've learned. Um, it's, well, we're a family, it's a business. I've got children, I've got two, mm. seven and nine. They're full of energy and I did this to run my life around my children and my business goes around my children so I don't stop working but I work around them mm. and 
if it doesn't get done straight away, it will be done. Bookkeeping is uh, not something that is absolute. Well, there are a couple of situations where it may be immediate action is required, <laughs> but it's not always. It can be. It doesn't have to be done at two yeah. o'clock in no, the afternoon. No, no. yeah, okay. So Sorry. that really helps with my and family. was that was that part of what you considered when you were setting this up? Is that actually this is a business where there isn't anything that's absolutely time critical that it may need to be done in that two day period or that two or three day period, but it actually doesn't need to be done. I don't need to turn up anywhere at nine o'clock in the morning. No, that's right, yeah, and you know the. For example, VAT returns. We all know when they're coming up, so we give ourselves plenty yeah. of time to schedule that into the diary. Mm. It's it's not an immediate action. Mm. Um, so business. good, good yeah. planning, really good. So good planning, perhaps setting expectations with your clients mm-hmm. that no, you are not available at nine o'clock at night or four in the morning or whenever they may think they want to give you a call or drop some some receipts <laughs> over, and actually cr- creating a business where you can plan and you don't have to react to an emergency. There's been a couple of situations yeah, where we have, but it's yeah, it's but largely it's not an emergency service. No, no, no. Yeah. and and that that flexibility yeah. of family life around a business mm. has been invaluable to me. I mean, I remember um, you know having to ask for time off to go to nativities and things, and it you know or sports day. Now we don't worry about that. Mm. I I don't mind working in the evening once my kids are settled. I don't mind it, yeah. you know. And quite a lot of the time, the business owners that I work with do the same so we're all emailing each other at, at nine o'clock at so night this, so, <laughs> so, so, so this was this was part of how you of, of the considerations when you yeah. set up okay we're, we're going really we're going really fast um what are you reading or listening to this week i'm reading games patterson oh uh, detective series and it's just a light relief just to put yeah. my head into something else I yeah. love it. Normally, it's me who comes up. I, I love reading crime thrillers. It's how yeah. I switch off at night, yeah. um, you yeah. know. And and I don't, yeah. And I and always everyone has all these like really great books uh, for learning and everything. Yeah. And this is the first time I've sat here and I've had someone who also, you know, like me. You have to switch your brain you off. Have to you know, you have I think to, you have to. I mean, my, yeah. one of my things I learned this week. I can't do everything for everybody all of the time. Mm. So take a step back, knock something off the list that's not important and get on with what you want to do. Mm. And yeah, reading reading crime novels is absolutely my escape. Love it. Good. Good. I haven't had a lot of time for reading this week. <laughs> it's been half term. Um, by the time I actually would read, it would be time to shut my eyes. So, uh, but I have read some really good books. I, I love a good, you know, a book that teaches you something or... You know, well, I I do listen mainly to audiobooks. I haven't really read many recently. I've one that sticks out would be um, Fern Cotton Happy Place. Love that book. I've listened to most of them in her series. Um, I like things as well, like what's it? Uh, Feel better, live more. Doctor oh, Chatterjee. Okay. Things that aren't to do with any business but you're learning something about life and you know you learn how to look after yourself and things like that that's always quite nice to have a bit of an escape and a switch off uh, but I do also listen to the business books as well <laughs> <laughs> but, I, but we we do don't we because I listen to business books because I love what I do yeah mm. so I, I, I I'm into crime novels as well so I listen to those but you know I, I if I didn't love what I do I wouldn't be able to do it no that's right I'm one I, I sort of sometimes flick on to to youtube and and just sort of watch some talks by really inspiring business people and i do but i i like to to gather that sort of information in little snippets you know yeah. I, I find it hard for me my attention span to sit down listening to it is um in, in one go i i struggle mm. with that so i just do little bits and pieces mm. throughout the day and uh and i find you know sort of some of it perks you up and then the second part of your day you might be doing slightly differently from what you've heard mm. so um so i just like and i just yeah. random things Things. No one in particular, but if something headline catches my eye, I'll uh, you know tune in or, or tune out if it's not not my cup of tea. But one thing I've learned actually recently is is working hard and having a reward at the end of it because I um, used to work such long hours. But I didn't have like a give myself a break. So I'm like, I must get this done, must get this done. Mm-hmm. So now I sort of break it up and I have like a reward 
waiting for me, something I'm either going to go out and do or something I might go and watch. And it's actually made me so much more productive. I'm so far ahead in my um, schedule at the moment for going to print than I have been before because I give myself these rewards, but it makes me work harder in the middle of it. Oh, I like that. Mm. little reward now and yeah. then. Yeah, like yeah. watching Ted Lasso on, um, you know, Apple TV or something like that, you know, but I've got to earn it, you know, yes. so it's, yeah. Um, but yeah, loving all of that. So that's my top tip that I've learned. Incentive. Yes. So talking about top tips, what's your top tool, technique or productivity tip? Um, it, so it can be a thing. It could be a, a piece of software or something, or it could be that you write something. It doesn't matter. Oh, um... Well, we've all heard of time blocking. That's okay, okay. quite a standard one, isn't it? I do find, especially when working on clients, that it can be you've got to get your head down and get really focused and into it and yeah, try and okay. turn off all distractions. That's obviously really good top tip. I think something we've done fairly recently is we've got a joint calendar. <laughs> I don't Which put helps. things in it. Lisa doesn't put everything <laughs> in it for me. But... We've both made a commitment to look at the calendar and do what it says on the calendar. So yeah. if you're scheduled in to do that job, you do that job. Obviously, things happen in yeah. and around. I know where Lisa is. She knows where I am. And commit to it. Yeah. But things all don't always go to plan. No. Nope. And that's OK. So I was just about to say, <laughs> what, are, what are some of the, the challenges around being mum and daughter in a business have you have you had does it all just do you all just trot along and it's all swimmingly oh. and lovely and flowery I've got one or, I'd love to or, say or, yes or, or, <laughs> I, I, if you did you have to leave I'd just, <laughs> I'd, I'd just slap you and you'd be gone um, so so how do you keep I, I want to say keep the peace because I don't necessarily believe in that but how do you keep it all moving forwards and okay because there must be a disagreement at some point yeah and we've had disagreements before a uh, difference of opinion mm. um but it we kind of have to we have to we leave the business at some point mm. shut the door in the office yeah, we don't do it we, we the lisa's children asked if they could have a swear pot on the table so every time we talked <laughs> about ac bookkeeping <laughs> we had to put money in and then they could spend it afterwards yeah <laughs> That's a that idea. they were yeah, they got a few treats out of that, I must admit. But, uh, yeah, it is hard to switch off, especially when you're sitting around the table having dinner of an evening and your husbands okay. are there and your kids yeah. are there. But they're also a great sounding board for ideas, inspiration. Yeah. You know. uh, so, but you two, you two actually having disagreements, because I think this is, this, you know, this is one of the things that I think affects families in business is that there is a personal relationship as well as a business relationship i think we um complement each other very well because it, i i'm sort of in the office sorting out some of the problem clients or a bigger issue and Lisa's skills lay elsewhere with a lot of networking and. Did and you realise what those were, or did you no. sit down? Did you so so it just evolved? Okay, so you didn't actually sit down and go, "Who's going to do what?" It just it fell into a groove. Mm. Yeah, and I'm okay. more. If we disagree about something, it might be um, more on the financial side, or it's never about the way we do things because I can't do what Lisa does, and Lisa's some of. The deeper knowledge I've got. So part been... of what you do between you is you stay in your you stay in your own lanes and you respect what the other person does yep. and their knowledge, and that you don't try and poke your nose in on on their area of expertise. That perfectly describes the situation. Because... So there's a re there's there's that <laughs> level of respect. Yep. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we've when we started, we sort of put together what our values would be for the company or okay. the business and that was a, a tip that we s said we should mm. really think through but everything came from family mm. our family you know care consideration respect respect yeah all of those things mm. so we thought well we need to carry this through in our business because it works in our personal life so let's move that through into the business not only just to our clients that we work with you know take top give them brilliant consideration with their business the care that they need um work as a partner we like to call we like to think of them as partners rather than clients although we mm. call them clients but 
Um, we want to be part of their team and we are a team. So not everyone has to be good at everything, yeah. even within your business. What uh, would be, if, if somebody sat there and they're thinking they're going to set up a business with their family, whoever that is, be it a, a partner, you know, a life partner or, or a mother and daughter or son and father or whatever relationship, what do you think, what's the key piece of advice you'd give them? So they're, they're on the precipice and they're thinking, shall I do this? What is the piece of advice? Mine would be look at each other's skills, skill base. Um, don't be scared. You find out an awful lot about each other as you go along. Um, but note down what one person is good at and the other person might be good at. If your paths are very similar or your strengths and skills are very similar, I don't know how that would be because I haven't experienced that. We haven't experienced that. Mm. I mean, We've experienced um, different... Yeah, Lisa's skills are different to mine. We, I mean, I don't, underst- I don't always agree with what you want to spend money on. <laughs> she's, believe it or not, she's really hot on our cash flow. <laughs> <laughs> but I, don't underst- I didn't understand it in the beginning. I didn't understand why Lisa needed to do some of the visits and the meetings and the going out and explaining everything because I wasn't in that world. Now I get it. So are you talking about sort of going out and networking yeah, and meeting? Yeah, yeah okay. I mean, when I came back and said, oh, I need to join this group, she was like, all right, ca- straight how to much? cash flow, how much? <laughs> and I thought, got to look at the big picture. Hmm. And it's that... It's a learning it, curve. You, you yeah. talk about things. when you, it, it works when you've got difference of opinion because you can talk about it and it's almost like you've got to give the reasons why and it convince someone and then hmm. it becomes a joint decision. It's... Okay. Laying it out so all is, on it, the table. is anyone the boss? <laughs> well, she calls me the boss. I do. I call her the boss. Can I have an off? I don't believe boss? I'm the boss. I, it's a, it's no because we uh, and going forward, we'd like to be able to employ one day, and I want them to feel part of uh, a business where everyone contributes, not just one person. You know, is is the top. There'll be leaders. But we lead so in a who, way that... Who, if there's a disagreement, <laughs> who has the final say? Probably me. Right. <laughs> <laughs> See, I knew we'd get uh, Yeah, you'd get there. You'd pull it out of us. <laughs> <laughs> I knew I'd get there in, I'd get there in the end. Um, so Lisa and Anne, how can people get hold of you? Well, we're on um, socials. We're on Facebook individually. As Lisa Perry and Anne Collins, we're on LinkedIn separately. Lisa Perry and Collins, and we've got business pages as well on both AC Bookkeeping. Um, our website's got all sorts of stuff about us on there. www.acbookkeeping.co.uk. That's a great place. You can send us uh, an email from there as well. And what's what would be a starting point? So if somebody's thinking, yeah, I think I'd like to to work with with these women, what would be what would happen? What's the first thing that would happen? Well, I, you, it's usually myself sets up a, an initial call to understand where they are in their business, what's going on, uh, get the sort of real background story of, you know, how many people they've got in the business, that sort of thing, understand where their frustrations lie. Uh, it could be just that they've got no time, it could be they don't understand it they're, or their lack of knowledge. You know, let's find out and get down to the real reason why they think they need a bookkeeper and then we can advise of how we slot in to help smooth so processes. It's, it's, it's basically, it's a discovery call and yeah. it's a conversation. It, it's yeah. all very bespoke. There's no co- two clients that have no. the same. Got you. Really. Okay. Let's do a couple more sort of fiery questions. Um, I'm going to go to each of you. So, and I'm going to swap round. Okay. okay. So, what is, and your top tip for being in business? Organisation and patience. Lisa, what's your top tip for being in business? Preparation, research and processes. Okay. I'm going to come back to you now. Okay. So what it, what do you know now that you wish you'd have known when you started out? Oh, that <laughs> you don't need to say yes to everything. At the beginning, I think maybe we did, which we learned from and I don't think you know you you think things that you're failing but when you actually look back 
it's more of a lesson. They're always lessons. Mm. They're not fails. And what do you know now that you wish you'd have known when you started out? Why didn't I do this years ago? <laughs> Why did I spend all that time commuting and not working for myself? Okay. Mm. I like that. So, Lisa and together they are AC Bookkeeping. Thank you so much for joining us in the studio. Thank you. Thank you. For Great. sharing all of your sort of tips and ideas for doing something I certainly I, <laughs> I sort of I sort of manage in one aspect but you know hats off to you thank you so much Laura Lawrence um, we will see you all next time in the Women in Business radio show so thank you so much everybody <laughs> Welcome to the Women in Business radio show with Sean Murphy, connecting women in business. Tune in next week to the Women in Business radio.